Welcome to Module 12 of the ICO's Data Protection and PECA Training. This module is divided into two sessions, one for DPA Part 3 and one for Part 4. This session covers Part 3, Law Enforcement Processing. By the end of this session, you will be able to Understand that the DPA sets out a specific tailored data protection regime for controllers and their processors for law enforcement processing. Appreciate where to find the key definitions with respect to processing under Part 3. Appreciate that under Part 3, the rights of the individual may be restricted. This session is intended to introduce the general requirements of Part 3 you will need to refer to the guidance for more information. Remember, you can pause the module at any time to look at the legislation or even to take a moment to absorb the information. So let's get started. Part 3 of the DPA covers processing for criminal law enforcement purposes by competent authorities, such as the police. It implements the European Law Enforcement Directive, known as the LED, in UK law. A directive provides more flexibility than a regulation and has to be transposed into a country's domestic law. It is more suitable for law enforcement, as each country will do this slightly differently, and so each adoption of the LED may differ slightly in practice. In contrast, an EU regulation, such as the GDPR, requires the text to be implemented by all member states in its entirety. So the EU GDPR is exactly the same across all the EU countries. The UK GDPR reflects the EU GDPR, but may deviate in time. Finally, Article 2 of the UK GDPR explicitly states that it does not apply to the processing of personal data for law enforcement purposes. Part 3 of the DPA provides its own definitions, principles and data subject rights relating to law enforcement. In the schedules, the DPA gives a list of competent authorities these are the organisations which Part 3 applies to and conditions for sensitive processing for law enforcement purposes, other than consent. Let's now discuss what makes a competent authority and what the law enforcement purposes are. Part 3 applies to information which is processed for law enforcement purposes by a competent authority. Section 31 of the DPA lists these purposes. This does not cover civil enforcement processing which falls under the UK GDPR. An organisation may process data under the UK GDPR and then pass it to the police who will process it under Part 3 of the DPA. For example, the processing of data by banks for the purposes of detecting crime such as fraud initially falls under the UK GDPR. If they pass fraud data to the police or national crime agency, these competent authorities will process it under Part 3. An organisation such as the police will not process all the personal data it holds for law enforcement purposes. For example, they are likely to process general HR data under the UK GDPR. Therefore, law enforcement organisations will process data under both pieces of legislation. Section 30 of the DPA defines a competent authority as a person specified in Schedule 7 and any other person that has statutory functions for any of the law enforcement purposes. Let's first consider Schedule 7. Schedule 7 of the DPA gives a list which covers the UK Government Ministerial Departments, Chief Offices of Police and other policing bodies, other authorities with investigatory functions, 
authorities with functions relating to offender management, and finally, other authorities, for example, the Director of Public Prosecutions, the ICO. This list may be amended by a statutory instrument. The intelligence services are not listed as competent authorities as they are governed by the provisions in Part 4 of the DPA. A competent authority also includes any other person that has statutory functions for any of the law enforcement purposes. This means any public authority with powers to investigate and or prosecute crimes and impose sentences, or any other organisation empowered by law to exercise those powers in a way that gives them control over the data, as a controller as opposed to a data processor. For example, this includes a local authority when prosecuting trading standards offences or the Environment Agency when prosecuting environmental offences. In another module, we discussed a gym which collects CCTV footage to monitor its car park. This falls under the UK GDPR because it is not a prosecuting authority or a law enforcement authority. Remember that in order to fall under Part 3, the processing must be by a competent authority and for law enforcement purposes. Both requirements must be met. Let's look at an example. The police are investigating an individual they suspect of committing a burglary. The police are a competent authority and are processing the individual's personal data for law enforcement purposes. This processing falls under Part 3 of the DPA. The officer in charge of the investigation does a good job and is promoted. The police HR department record the officer's new pay grade and salary. This is not processing for a law enforcement purpose and falls under the UK GDPR. Depending on the purpose of the processing, the police will process under Part 3 of the DPA or the UK GDPR. Take a moment to pause this module and look at these sections and paragraphs. Sections 30, 31 and 33 in Part 3 of the DPA and Schedule 7. We have seen that processing of personal data under the UK GDPR must comply with the six data protection principles outlined in Article 5. In the same way, processing under Part 3 must comply with its own principles. They mirror the UK GDPR principles A to F, but are slightly different. They are numbered 1 to 6 and have specific requirements regarding law enforcement processing. For example, Principle 4, Accuracy, states that personal data based on facts must, so far as possible, be distinguished from personal data based on personal assessments. This means there must be a clear differentiation between subjective witness statements and factual evidence. The requirement for accuracy does not apply to the content of a statement, but to the fact that a specific statement has been made. Intelligence information must be flagged as such and not confused with provable factual information. The police must also clearly identify the person suspected of an offence, the victims and the witnesses. Also under Principle 5, there needs to be in place a regular review of the need for the continued retention of personal data. We will discuss Principle 1 in more detail, but first let's look at an example of the principles in practice. The police interview all the witnesses to a crime and keep a record. They must only process this data for the specific law enforcement purpose they have powers to undertake and for which it was collected, such as investigating a criminal offence. They must only record relevant data and not keep excessive information. 
They clearly identified the facts of the case and the witness statements. They clearly identified the persons suspected of the offence, the victim and the witnesses. They keep the data securely and for their specified retention period. The first data protection principle states that processing for law enforcement purposes must be lawful and fair. This is section 35 in part 3. In order to be lawful, processing must be based on law. This might be, for example, statute, common law, royal prerogative or statutory code. It will in part depend on the specific laws to which the relevant competent authority is subject. Some authorities, such as the police, may be able to rely more heavily on common law than other organisations, which are more constrained by the nature of their constitution and legal framework. In addition, the processing is lawful if either the data subject has given consent to the processing for that purpose, or processing is necessary for the performance of a task carried out for that purpose by a competent authority. Remember that Principle A of the UK GDPR requires processing to be lawful, fair and transparent. Here, under Part 3, Principle 1, there is no requirement for transparency. This is because there will be circumstances in which a law enforcement agency will need to be able to neither confirm nor deny that it is processing an individual's personal data. This could reveal operationally sensitive or potentially damaging information that could, for example, prejudice an ongoing criminal investigation. Although it isn't defined here, the threshold for consent is equivalent to that required under the UK GDPR. In practice, consent is often hard to obtain in law enforcement. This is because in many circumstances, individuals may not have a genuine choice about the processing. Principle 1 at section 35 defines sensitive processing and gives this processing extra protection. As you can see, this is similar to special category data under the UK GDPR. Sensitive processing may be quite common in law enforcement, given the types of scenarios and data collected. Under section 35, subsection three, sensitive processing is only permitted in two cases, if, the data subject has given consent and the controller has an appropriate policy document or APD in place, or the processing is strictly necessary for law enforcement purposes, the processing meets at least one of the conditions in Schedule 8 and at the time when the processing is carried out, the controller has an APD in place. Remember, the APD is a document which explains a controller's compliance with the principles and retention policies. This requirement is laid out in section 42 of part 3. Please see our guidance for more information. There is also a link to a template APD for part 3 processing. Schedule 8 contains the conditions for sensitive processing under Part 3 and includes conditions such as statutory purposes, legal claims, judicial acts and preventing fraud. Remember that in circumstances involving law enforcement processing, consent can be problematic and difficult to obtain. Let's look at two examples. The police are investigating a crime. The police process the personal data of the suspect to see if they have committed other crimes. This is processing by a competent authority for law enforcement purposes and so falls under part three of the DPA. The processing must be lawful and fair under principle one. There is no need to be transparent. The processing must be based on law and in this case, the police also consider that processing is necessary for the performance of a task carried out for law enforcement purposes. They do not want or need to ask for the consent of the individual. 
In this situation, the police can't process by consent because the data subject would be likely to refuse consent if they thought it could prevent the investigation. There is no sensitive processing involved. Let's now consider the other requirements if sensitive processing is involved. In this example, the police are investigating a fight where the victim is badly injured. As before, this is processing by a competent authority for law enforcement purposes and so falls under part three of the DPA. The processing must be lawful and fair under principle one. It is based on law and processing is necessary for the performance of a task carried out for law enforcement purposes by a competent authority. The police do not want or need to ask for the consent of the individual to the processing. Because the charges involve the health of the victim, this involves sensitive processing. The police consider the processing is necessary for law enforcement purposes and have an APD in place. They will also rely on the Schedule 8 condition, paragraph 1, statutory purposes. This says the condition is met if the processing is necessary for the exercise of a function conferred on a person by an enactment or rule of law and is necessary for reasons of substantial public interest. Take a moment to pause this module and look at the text of these sections and paragraphs. Part 3, Chapter 3 of the DPA accords the individual specific rights with respect to the processing of personal data for a law enforcement purpose. These include the right of access by the data subject and the right to rectification, erasure and restriction. There is no right to data portability or to object to processing, including direct marketing. A controller may not take a significant decision based solely on automated processing unless that decision is required or authorised by law. In practice, solely automated processing is rarely used in the law enforcement context and is unlikely to have any operational implications. There is often an element of human interaction involved, which means the processing is not solely automated. A database of criminal records or prosecution histories is an automated processing system, not automated decision making. The information an individual is entitled to under the right of access is listed in section 45. This largely works in the same way as the UK GDPR right of access. A controller must also respond to any request exercising a right within a month. This cannot be extended. It might also refuse a manifestly unfounded or excessive request or charge a reasonable fee. We will look in a moment at how these rights might be restricted, but if this is the case, the controller must tell the data subject the reasons why their rights have been restricted. This may not be applicable if giving this explanation would itself undermine the purpose of imposing the restriction. For example, the police may not want to tell an individual they are under investigation. The controller must also explain the right to make a request to the commissioner under section 51 to check processing is compliant with the DPA or that the refusal of a request is lawful. Complain to the commissioner and apply to a court under section 167. A restriction works like an exemption and limits the rights the data subject might exercise. Restrictions to the part three rights are relevant to the law enforcement purposes. For example, there is a category of data called relevant data, which is contained in a judicial decision or in documents relating to the investigation or proceedings which are created by or on behalf of a court or other judicial authority. If this data is processed in the course of a criminal investigation or proceedings, a controller does not have to make information available 
or allow other rights in relation to that data. This is because defendants will have access to such data through alternative routes, such as the court disclosure process. In many cases, a controller may also restrict the right of access and or the provision of information to the data subject, wholly or partly, if this is a necessary and proportionate measure to avoid obstructing an official or legal inquiry, investigation or procedure, avoid prejudicing the prevention, detection, investigation or prosecution of criminal offences, or the execution of criminal penalties, protect public security or national security, and protect the rights and freedoms of others. In deciding whether restricting access is necessary and proportionate, a controller needs to have regard to the rights and legitimate interests of the data subject. Finally, if personal data must be kept for the purposes of evidence, the controller should not rectify or erase it if requested, but should instead restrict its processing. Please see the guidance which explains how a controller might limit the provision of information with respect to each right. An individual is recorded on CCTV breaking into a car. A passerby stops them, but is then attacked by the individual. This is witnessed by a number of people. The individual thinks the CCTV footage has been disclosed to the police and requests a copy from the police. They ask the police to tell them what they are doing with this personal data and ask them to delete it. They ask for a full copy of any witness statements. The police are interviewing witnesses and are about to press charges. The police refuse to inform the individual about this processing because this would prejudice the prosecution of a criminal offence. They refuse to provide the witness statements because this would also prejudice the investigation and they must also protect the rights and freedoms of these other people. The police refuse to erase the CCTV footage because it contains evidence. If the victim requested details of the police's processing in relation to the assault, the police might not restrict their right to be informed in these circumstances. This is because this disclosure would not prejudice the prosecution of the offence. The terms controller and processor are defined in Part 3, Section 32. A controller is a competent authority which alone or jointly with others determines the purposes and means of the processing of personal data or has an obligation under an enactment to process data. Only competent authorities can be joint controllers under Part 3, so any arrangement between a controller which is a competent authority and one which is not can't be a joint controller arrangement. For example, this applies to arrangements between police counter-terrorism units and the intelligence services, because the intelligence services aren't competent authorities. A processor is defined as any person who processes personal data on behalf of the controller, other than a person who is an employee of the controller. Part 3, Chapter 4 makes provision for both controllers and processors, their general obligations, specific obligations with respect to security, obligations regarding personal data breaches, and data protection officers. In accordance with Section 62, both controllers and processors have a requirement to log certain data. This applies to metadata for automated systems, for example, logs of any changes to the data, recording who made them and when. The police have automated systems such as the Police National Computer and the Automatic Number Plate Recognition System. Each force will have their own. Competent authorities must keep logs of consultation and logs of disclosure. 
Section 62 lists the purposes the logs may be used for, for example, to verify the lawfulness of processing. The controller or processor must also make the logs available to the Commissioner on request. Part 3, Chapter 5 deals with the transfer of personal data to third countries or international organisations. It specifies that the transfer must meet certain conditions such as it is necessary for a law enforcement purpose, it is based on an adequacy decision or there are appropriate safeguards, it is based on special circumstances, for example, to protect vital interests. The intended recipient is a relevant authority in a third country, a competent authority, or a relevant international organisation. There are also provisions for transfers which aren't to a relevant authority. International transfers will be covered in Module 15. You have now completed Session 1 of Module 12 and should now be able to understand that the DPA sets out a specific tailored data protection regime for controllers and their processors for law enforcement processing. Appreciate where to find the key definitions with respect to processing under Part 3. Appreciate that under Part 3 the rights of the individual may be restricted. And finally, there is further information on these topics in our guidance on our website and you will find the relevant links in your notes. There are more topics under all the headings in the guidance, but this slide highlights some of the key areas for further reading. Please now go on to complete Session 2 of Module 12, which covers Intelligence Services Processing under Part 4 of the DPA. Thank you for listening.